Hello, my name is Atanas Kiryakov, and I'll uh, provide you an overview on how RDF uh, overtook the advantages of property graphs in the recent years and what are the key benefits that it still has and bears for knowledge graph applications. Uh, to continue with a quick introduction, I'm the founder of Ontotex. We uh, started back in year 2000 as Semantic Web and Semantic Technology Pioneer. And now we are best known as uh, the, the developer of GraphDB, one of the most popular database engines. Uh, we are an enterprise knowledge graph thought leader, and we enjoy being the center of an ecosystem of yeah, more than 20 partners, all the way from portfolio partners, which complement our technology to uh, consulting and, and delivery partners. We are profitable and growing. We have uh, among our customers, yeah, the leaders in many fields, like in financial services, uh, in in yeah, media and publishing, in government, uh, aerospace, uh, healthcare, life sciences, or infrastructure management, like Johnson Controls and Schneider, Schneider Electric. We are also involved in all sorts of standardization bodies that have something to do with it because we we care about the future of this of this technology and uh, this this trend. Uh, to give you yeah a graphy uh, introduction to what we are doing. Uh, we are here to connect the dots of your enterprise knowledge. We do this by uh, yeah, uh, basically combining and fusing and, and uh, making your proprietary information smarter. Our special way to do this, special source, a special ingredient, is that we use deep domain knowledge to enrich your proprietary uh, information. And uh, the way in which we do it is that we, we put together uh, we create, we craft, we help you craft uh, rich knowledge graphs that enable unified data views and this way uh, more, more, more deeper and more, more, more fruitful analytics. Uh, the way in which we create these knowledge graphs is by yeah, linking and uh, linking data across different sources, reconciling, reconciling data, converting uh, strings to things. Uh, the usual things to 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 end up with uh, uh, with the body of uh, uh, body of knowledge that is easy to query and to explore and 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 to deal with. Uh, well, this requires a fair amount of text analysis, data analysis, machine learnings, uh, all, all the fancy things, and that's what more or less everyone does. Uh, again, our special sources that we uh, we we've been maturing for twenty years. How we can use uh, uh, almost exhaustive domain knowledge big volumes of domain knowledge uh, to, to, to provide context uh, and to, to, to help us better interpret, better recognize, better, better classify things. Uh, and that's, that's from the bigger picture, the way in which domain knowledge uh, help um, yeah, connecting the dots of your enterprise knowledge. And that's for us very important ingredient of talking about knowledge graphs at all. We store these knowledge graphs, we manage these knowledge graphs with uh, our uh, semantic uh, database and search engine, GraphDB. And what's still missing on this picture is why we do this. Well, we want to give you better insights uh, and rich results, full, full, full results as much as possible in less time. And that's what GraphDB is designed to do all together. Uh, on the bigger picture, a knowledge graph management platform uh, should cover a, a, a bigger set of uh, capabilities from yeah, building, um, build, build, building these uh, big data data artifacts, uh, storing, indexing, operations, accessibility, uh, federation, exploration, analytics, uh, and for each of those, there yeah, more specific capabilities that should be there. Uh, we develop a lot of these, the orange boxes ourselves, and uh, we 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 made the decision. To, to use our partner ecosystem tools from our partners for other capabilities like taxonomy editors, ontology editors, data catalogs or chatbots. Uh, so that's our way of working in this field because we can't uh, cover it all uh, at, at, at yeah, matching our, our, our criteria for mature software. Uh, we are uh, the leader of the RDF space you know that like the graph database field and the graph technology field has like the property graphs chapter and the RDF chapter. We're in the RDF chapter, and from this position, I want to to tell you what are 
uh, what were the historic advantages of uh, property graphs and, and, and how uh, RDF addressed this. So uh, the easiest argument for someone to make uh, on, on, on the property graph side was, well, in, 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 in Think and Probe and everything on top of it, you can attach uh, properties to, to edges and say things about the edges in the graph. Well, in RDF, you can only do so for, for the nodes. And then the second big, big argument was, well, <clears throat> uh, uh, in Think and Probe, everything is designed and thought of uh, yeah, providing efficient graph traversal. And historically, this wasn't the case in, in RDF. But over the last three years, the yeah, RDF uh, yeah, uh, addressed this in a very, very comprehensive manner. The first thing was uh, RDF star. That's a specific specification for attaching metadata to the edge, edges of the graph that started 2014. And now there are plenty of uh, implementations across the different vendors. The second uh, topic is yeah, the Sparkle extensions, which allow for graph traversal, path search, and generally speaking, exploration of multi-hop relationships in graphs. So I'll continue this presentation with uh, a bit more uh, flesh and technical detail on the, uh, how RDF star is implemented and uh, how RDF engines implement uh, graph traversal. Uh, and then uh, I'll give you my view on yeah, what's the added value of knowledge graphs, and finally how RDF uh, enables this, this added value. To start with a uh, yeah, hello RDF example, uh, if you want to encode uh, the information that Abraham Lincoln was uh, president of the United States, that's a very easy way to, to do it. You have two nodes and uh, one relationship, one edge labeled with president of. You can have a slightly more advanced version uh, having labels or names for the two nodes. Uh, but the reality check says, well, actually, you, you, you have to be able to do much more than this. So uh, you need to, to provide contextual temporal information uh, as well as uh, provenance metadata so that you have all the, all the important information about this fact and this edge. Uh, and uh, historically in RDF, there was no easy way to attach this information to an edge in the graph. Uh, but yeah, now, now, it, now you can see how it works in RDF star. So uh, you can have the statement, uh, Abraham Lincoln position held president of the United States. And for this entire statement, you can make another statement saying, well, this thing, this fact, this statement uh, uh, has start, starting date, whatever, whatever uh, literal that is the starting date. So you can make statements about statements. If you want to look at this uh, at, the, at the diagram, uh, uh, think of having an edge and then being able to make another edge that starts from the first one uh, and making statement about it. That's much more expressive than the key value pairs that uh, uh, you can do in property graphs. And that's the most consensual part of uh, what, what is coming uh, for standardization in RDF 1.2. Uh, before, before RDF star, there were other ways to do the same thing, like uh, standard reconcilia reconciliation in RDF or any relationships or singleton property, singleton name graphs. Uh, but those were not very handy. So RDF star made uh, attach metadata to the nodes really simple. Uh, and we also made sure that the GraphDB implementation makes it uh, makes it efficient. So we have efficiency gain. We, we took a, a Wikidata fragment uh, that if you encode it with the standard verification, it takes almost 400 million statements. It takes a bit less than an hour to load it and so on. And if you encode the same data in RDF star, it is almost twice smaller, uh, less statements, and, and it takes much less time to load, and it takes much less time on your hard drive. So we also have uh, this uh, RDF star support now for, for several, for a couple of years, and uh, we have some of our partners already using it. To give you a use case, uh, Synaptica is the developer of Graphite. Uh, that's uh, one of the leading vocabulary management, taxonomy management tools. They use GraphDB to store uh, all these taxonomies and vocabularies in as SCOS data. Uh, but historically, they had problem of how, how they manage their access control lists. Uh, and without RDF star, expressing which users can control, have access to uh, what access to which properties in which schema for what project was uh, like what you see at the top, it was encoded with um, 
five different statements. And now with RDF star, uh, it is much simpler. There are no auxiliary nodes and you can, you, you need only three statements to encode this information. So it's it's obviously much simpler. We also uh, took care to, to uh, uh, we made our homework to see uh, how the other engines uh, handle different corner cases, like uh, statements about statements about statements, nested and nested, nested uh, embedded triples, or how, how they deal with the situation. Imagine you delete a triple from, from your repository and you want to maintain information about who and when deleted this one. So the statement is not there, but you I should be able to keep metadata about it and this kind of thing. So we, we took care to address them well. So by now you should be convinced that, uh, yeah, edges, uh, edges and properties are covered very, very well in the RDS space. So let's move on to the graph traversal and how it is implemented. It, it is a computationally very complex problem. It comes in different flavors, like uh, checking whether there is a path between two nodes or finding the shortest path or finding all paths or the neighboring nodes and stuff like this. And what they have in common is that they're computationally heavy problems. It doesn't matter whether you do it deep first search or breadth first search, uh, it, is, it is complex. And complexity goes exponentially with the length of the, of, of the path that you're searching for. So, Still, there, there are a number of good reasons to, to find a way to implement it because it's very useful for yeah, navigation or for knowledge graph analysis, supply chain management, uh, and so on and so forth. There are plenty of use cases. So historically, uh, yeah, uh, Sparkle was able to almost do this, uh, but uh, in Sparkle 1.1, you can do property paths to discover whether there is a path, but you cannot get the intermediate nodes. Uh, and it's very hard also to, to, to implement in, 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 Spark, in plain Sparkle 1.1 one, one shortest path. Uh, there are workarounds, but none of them is something you are going to like. Uh, they're also slow. So to others, this, all, the, all the vendors of graph databases did um, yeah, some extensions of Sparkle to others. This. That's how our extension looks like. So you, 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 you have a service clause in, 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 in Sparkle that where you, you tell, I want to do all paths search and you provide source and destination if you want, or just the source. Uh, and then you can specify the maximum path optionally uh, <clears throat> and so on and so forth. You can also specify the, the, the pattern that, that you want to, to, to trace. So that, that you can specify specific conditions, patterns in the graph that need, need to, be, to, to be there for each step of this path. Uh, you can also do shortest path and uh, you can do bi bidirectional uh, uh, search also. Uh, so we covered all, all, all flavors of this task. Again, we did our, uh, our homework to see how others do uh, the same thing and uh, explore corner cases. Uh, and yeah, you see that uh, our, our, our competitors have different advantages and disadvantages in this field. But what's most important for us is that we try to keep keep compliance, so not to, not to implement it by some hacks in the Sparkle parsers. So uh, 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 this table was in, oh, yeah, in, in a way, we yeah, are checking the boxes, seeing whether, whether we can do this and that. What really matters for us is also whether do we do it well, whether we do it in an efficient manner. And that's where yeah, benchmarks help to see what, what is the actual complexity with specific hardware, with specific volumes of data, what are the choke points, what are the inefficiencies and address those. Uh, we use the linked data uh, uh, benchmarking council's social network benchmark for this purpose. LDBC is a TPC-like industry body. Uh, the graph, graph database vendors on text Neo4j, uh, CVI, we are among the, 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 the founders. Uh, and then now you have all the, all the yeah, major graph database vendors in there. A few words about the specific benchmark. Uh, uh, SMB is the most comprehensive graph analytics benchmark. It simulates the kind of questions that you would ask for the data behind the social network platform. Uh, and there were yeah, many, many person years invested in making good data generators. So this graph is both realistic and, and challenging and covers all the distributions and connectivity patterns in an, in an interesting fashion so that you can really challenge the engines and, and compare them. 
uh, to give you feeling of the data model. So you have uh, relations between between people like uh, nose relationship. You have attributes for people like uh, addresses, list cities, and so on. You have relationships also between people and companies or uh, universities and stuff like that. There are different sets of uh, queries. Uh, and uh, yeah, the interactive queries, uh, you have like one of them saying, well, let, let's get all, 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 all the people that you can get within three steps following the nose relationship from a given person or find the shortest path between two persons. So this, this is what these queries are like. Uh, and GravDB is the first uh, RDF engine to pass, uh, the, uh, to, to pass this benchmark. We do this in a stepwise manner. So uh, we, we are essentially push, pushing the boundaries of what we can get out of uh, workstation or uh, mid-range server with uh, yeah, the 30, 32 to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So far, we got wonderful results with uh, at scale factor uh, 10, which is uh, half a billion edges, graph with uh, social network uh, graph with half a billion edges. Uh, and we're working now to, 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 to the next scales and get it to the 5 billion edges. Uh, so uh, we benchmark GraphDB against uh, one of the most popular property graphs engines and we, we score very, very well. Uh, we, we get better results on the interactive queries. And I gotta admit, we, we are a bit slower on loading the data and, and, and updates. Uh, one way in which we can take benefit of what RDF engines do well is to use inference. And we extensively use uh, inference for this purpose. Uh, so for instance, when you have to, to follow a, 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 a path that involves uh, two types of relationships, knows and has person in, on each step uh, in the chain, like uh, right here. Uh, we use inference to, to do some sort of shortcuts, these direct knows uh, relationships, which are sh sh shortcuts of the relationships that we're trying to follow. And this allowed us to simplify the query. Uh, and this way, yeah, we made a query that takes half a minute, 30 times faster and gets sub, sub, sub second responses. Uh, so materialization using inference could be could be very very useful uh, for some of these tasks. So we 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 get also the uh, graph traversal and, and the finding path in the graph story covered. So uh, let's see what what the benefits uh, uh, what what are knowledge graphs graphs all about and how they differ from other ways of doing similar things. So uh, a quick quiz. Uh, let's think a little bit on what are uh, what is in common between these uh, these IT problems, these information management problems that 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 I'll list for you. So think of a, a, a very very big uh, retail bank that wants to consolidate information across its IT systems to do root cause analysis whenever there is a problem, like an ATM not functioning, or a market uh, market intelligence agency. Um, uh, that is that is the uh, provides reference price for oil and gas. They need to to have a really rich set of uh, signals about everything that may have some uh, may may impact the price of the oil and gas on some markets at some time. Uh, or a big uh, investment advisory that wants to have the best m a intelligence database on earth with all the companies and all the transactions and all the sections that you can do analysis by industries and technologies and so on and so forth or the fourth case here uh building management system yeah uh, consolidating the information about all, all sorts of systems in a big building like uh, the elevators heating ventilation electricity access control and uh, everything like that uh then finally, uh, think of a pharma company that receives a, a, a compliance a regular inquiry from FDA about side effects of drugs, and they got to find relevant information in uh, uh, within really thousands of long uh, reports from clinical trials of drugs. What these problems have in common is that uh, we have proven through the years that uh, the knowledge graphs can help for each and every of those problems. And what, the, what makes them specific and, and complex is that, uh, well, you need a unified view across diverse information to be able to address them. So you need uh, to combine 
uh, several databases developed with us, uh, without uh, in, in different departments uh, from the same organization. Uh, and to also use information, extract information from uh, documents and unstructured content. And quite often to, 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 to get this right, you need to use external knowledge, global domain knowledge in combination with the proprietary data. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is very, very specific and very important for uh, domains where you have to deal and tasks where we have to you have to deal with hundreds of thousands of concepts and entities uh, or even if there are not that many uh, situations where you have very complex interconnections and lots of uh, in relationships not just the taxonomy but more complex relationships between between uh, concepts and entities within the domain uh, as well as situations where uh, the, the semantics of the relationships really matter to properly interpret the data. Uh, so, yeah, uh, to, 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 to wrap it up, uh, what, what knowledge graphs uh, do in these cases is that uh, uh, they, they, they provide the business with competitive insights through better intelligence. And better intelligence means uh, deeper understanding of the data uh, based on yeah, deeper knowledge, uh, a copy of signals that you can derive from diverse data. Uh, and also instantaneous updates uh, that 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 uh, come if you have data fabric or another uh, <clears throat> another data integration platform that gives you flexibility and and sustainable updates. Uh, this is all these all these capabilities is what makes uh, knowledge graph yeah uh, helps knowledge knowledge graphs. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, disrupt several uh, existing uh, information management uh, fields like content management, data management, knowledge management, and nowadays more and more from uh, <clears throat> uh, business process management and automation, industry and infrastructure uh, and, and, and manufacturing. So you, you see that um, on the terminal nodes of this map or graph, you have plenty of, uh, plenty of different applications. Uh, that that we have seen uh, knowledge graphs being being successful so for so uh, the added value uh, to to again wrap it up is uh, that knowledge graphs can uh, serve as a hub across different systems data management content management and all sorts of metadata across them uh, and what's more important uh, we, we 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 layer semantic metadata uh, on on top of all this uh, all this knowledge to. Uh, make it easier easier to use. So, on the technical side, what what it means in practice uh, is point one linking data together so that you can interpret them better because a conceptual network of thousands of concepts can uh, pro uh, provide much more information, uh, and computers can take much more meaning out of it as comparative tables. Uh, having the same data in, in tables. Then the second thing would be is uh, to overlay semantic metadata to avoid uh, unambiguous interpretation, because when you get data from different sources, it is very likely uh, that uh, uh, in a different context, the information can be misinterpreted. Having proper the specification of the meaning of the different data pieces is very important. Knowing what kind of price is this, whether it's with or without VAT, whether it's before or after sales commission, uh, all these small things is what you need to describe in a very good manner so that you can get a useful, useful unified use. And the last thing here is that you, 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 uh, if you have a, a stable semantic uh, data model uh, and, and a reference data, that's that's the way to to basically have uh, continuous updates of your data and to be able to reuse uh, data prepared for other analytic purposes beforehand. So, finally, what is that RDF does better? To, to, to cover all these capabilities uh, that are necessary for, for knowledge graphs uh, as compared to any other data management paradigm. Well, explicit semantics that, that allows you to align the meaning of the different uh, uh, modeling assumptions across different IT systems, as well as uh, you can use semantics for to validate data on a semantic level to check consistencies, and this way maintain the quality of this combined, combined data set. There are plenty of features in RDF that uh, uh, foster interoperability. Uh, so that's federation protocols and remote access protocols. 
uh, as well as uh, different flavors of uh, syntax uh, that, that, that really help easy, easy exchange of data. Global identifiers, which make sure that when you put two, data, two pieces of data from different sources together, uh, uh, the, the, the things that must be linked there will, will click and link automatically and there will be no, no uh, identifier clashes. And uh, finally, there, is, there, 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 there are thousands of data sets available as RDF, as linked data. Life science is a good example, but now we, we see more and more of this also in the uh, industry and the infrastructure. You may not know, but uh, now you can get the entire information about uh, the, the electricity grids and network uh, in, in Europe uh, in RDF and do quite a lot of interesting things with it. Finally, it's about standards, uh, standards about everything, standard uh, serialization, syntax formats, schema languages, query languages, update languages, uh, and everything on top of this. Uh, using standards uh, is, uh, yeah, can, can come at a cost at the beginning, but uh, this is what, what, what makes your data management, enterprise data management setup uh, future-proof. And also standards is what what uh, what gives you uh, yeah much lower levels of vendor lock-in. Uh, and what is that property graphs lack to serve uh, such knowledge graph platforms? Well, it's all of this. So there is no formal semantics. Uh, there is very little to help you in terms of interoperability. And yeah. Uh, standard, standardization day just started, so probably in five or ten years, it will be there. So RDF engines, uh, yeah, the best platform to implement uh, knowledge graphs. They check all the boxes and now also uh, traversal and an analytics, uh, along with uh, yeah all the all the enterprise requirements. Uh, and yeah, I have to be fair that there are still cases in which uh, property graphs are better. So if you want to do some very specific uh, program in Gremlin to explore graph, yeah, that's the way to do it. Or uh, if you if you want to do really really heavy analytics with petabytes of uh, uh, data, then you 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 take a rack uh, full of uh, yeah servers with terabytes of RAM, and again, property graphs are likely to serve you a bit better. For everything else, RDF is what you need to get your graph infrastructure right. Thank you.